Hey, with the NBA All-Star break here, I thought it'd be a great time to look back and reminisce on your all-time favorite Laker memory. So let me know down in the comments, what's your all-time favorite Laker memory? For me, the 2000 run to the NBA title, I'll never forget. I was just a young guy, my formative years, and who could forget that lob pass from Kobe to Shaq, Shaq with the big eyes. Those were my formative years watching hoops, and I'll never forget that 2000 run to the finals. The Lakers, one of the best teams of all time, that 2000 team. Let me know down in the comments, and let's get it going on the Lakers Report. That's right, the NBA All-Star break is here, and I've got five takeaways, five major takeaways, heading into the NBA All-Star break for the Los Angeles Lakers. And it's a good thing we're having this conversation now because if you flip the script and rewind a couple of weeks, it might have a different tune. Because look at the Lakers. They are entering the All-Star break. Winners of seven of their last eight. They polished off a win over Utah the other night to conclude that uh, impressive streak of early February into the All-Star break. Got to feel good with that 138-122 win over the Utah Jazz. Without LeBron, no less. And I think it also highlighted what some of these role players are capable of doing. You had Rui Hachimara with the career-high 36 points. Austin Reeves has been really good. The addition of Spencer Dinwiddie adds one more piece for Darvin Ham and the rest of that coaching staff to work together to put together the best possible product on the court and see if this Lakers team has a run in them. And again, winners of seven of their last eight certainly makes you feel better entering the All-Star break than you would have when things were a little bit more dire in the middle of January. So my five takeaways leading into the NBA All-Star break will start with Austin Reeves. And you can't ignore the fact that he is heating up and he's starting to play like that prominent shooting guard the Lakers had hoped he could be and becoming a force offensively while also gelling with whoever is on the floor at the same time as Austin Reeves. And look at his numbers in the month of February. Better than 20 points per game and also playing as efficiently as he has. I mean, 51% from the field, 47.6% from the long line. If Austin Reeves can continue this pace and continue to play at this elite, high-octane level, I think this Lakers team is going to be scary down the stretch and into the playoffs. So the fact of the matter is Austin Reeves is heating up, and obviously I'm pointing it out the obvious, Mr. Captain Obvious, Jake Reitma here. If he can keep this up, the Lakers are a completely different team. And I know it always hasn't been smooth sailing with Austin Reeves, but to his credit, he's really stayed the course, and I think he's playing his best basketball heading into the All-Star break. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Grade the play of Austin Reeves this season so far because I think he has the potential to be an A-caliber shooting guard in the National Basketball Association. When you pair him with the star power that's already on this Lakers roster, he's one more piece to that puzzle that, again, can make this Lakers team scary down the stretch and into the NBA playoffs. So let me know what you think down in the comments, A, B, C, D, or F. What do you think of Austin Reeves this season so far? Now, my second takeaway, and maybe you could accuse me of recency bias here, and especially because he's coming off a career high 36 points, but Rui Hachimara seems to have found his groove and found the ability to connect with the other players on the floor. And Darvin Ham called him out a little bit earlier this season saying we needed more from him. And as of late, Rui has really shown he can be an important piece to the puzzle as well. The 36 points, a career high against the Jazz, but he also is just fitting in. And sometimes it's different, difficult to quantify what exactly that looks like, but you can tell that he's playing with a little bit more of an edge. He's playing more with more confidence. He's playing well on the defensive side of the ball. He's impacting the game through rebounding, through hustle points, through the 50-50 balls. Rui Hachimara is a guy that the Lakers need to be at his best if this team is going to have a run down the stretch. And check out what Darvin Am had to say about Rui after the game. It's essentially echoing everything I just mentioned. He's grown since we acquired him last year. He's been good on the ball defensively, keeping the ball in front of him. 
he went on to say he's getting offensive rebounds and giving us that physicality. He's in a good space, having fun with his teammates, and playing the game. So again, there's so many different layers and components that go into evaluating a player and their ability to impact the game. It doesn't always reflect on the stat sheet, but as Darvin Ham put it, I think having fun playing this game is a big part of it. And obviously it's more fun when you're winning, like the Lakers have in the month of February. But the fact of the matter remains, Rui can continue to be an impact player for the Lakers and another piece of the puzzle not named LeBron or not named AD. Now, coming up, we're going to talk about our perfect Lakers starting five because Tyron Ham, he's tried them all. I mean, we're talking 50 different starting combinations, it seems like, but I think Darvin Ham and the coaching staff have found their perfect five starting lineup. But first, I want to give a huge shout out to today's presenting sponsor, Price Picks, making the Lakers report possible. PricePicks.com slash CLNS. If you haven't gone there yet, what the hell are you doing? Get there now because we've got up to a $100 deposit match waiting for you. And all you need to know is Price Picks is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Adds a little bit more sizzle to your watching experience. I know you're watching the Lakers every single night, so you might as well make it that much more enjoyable. And hey, win some money while you're at it. And with the Lakers off tonight and for the remainder of the All-Star break, I will expand and branch out. Keeping it simple with this one, though. Anthony Edwards, I'm going more on 37 and a half. Now, that's uh, points, rebounds, and assists. And he could go for 38 points alone, but I feel good about that. Anthony Edwards, more on the points, rebounds, and assists total of 37 and a half. DeAndre Ayton, attitude problem. Kind of sick of seeing him in the news for all the wrong reasons. I don't think he's putting out 23 and a half points and rebounds combined, so I'm picking less there. I don't think he's in a good space, and so I'm going to go ahead and pick less. Now, there's only two picks here because, like I said, I'm keeping it simple. That means this has to be a power play. you got to get both picks correctly. But Prize Picks offers tons of different flexible options, one of them being the flex play where on a pick of more than two, you can get two out of three correct and still win your money. But find out for yourself, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And don't worry, we love you and we care about you here on the Lakers Report. So we'll put that link right in the comments and description of today's video because we're making it easy on you. Price Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Now, that brings me to my next point. And maybe I should have let off the show with this because... Speaking of career highs, D'Angelo Russell had 17 assists against the Jazz, and it really shows the fact that he's been stepping up even in the midst of all the trade rumors that continue to grow and grow and grow, and you got to feel for the guy how mentally taxing it must have been to play and continue to play at a high level even in the midst of all the trade speculation. And D'Angelo Russell is simply finding his groove. He's been one of the premier point guards in the entire National Basketball Association over the course of the last two months since the new calendar year. And you got to feel really good about the space he's in and how it's translated into his play on the field. Now, I mentioned the career high 17 assists in the win over the Jazz, and that's just one component of the entire sample size. But the stat line in general against the Jazz just shows how efficient of a player D'Angelo Russell can be when he plays at that high level, when he's impacting the game from a point guard perspective, and being that distributor that Darvin Ham and the rest of the Lakers coaching staff needs him to be with all of the offensive weapons this Lakers team has. You throw D'Angelo Russell out there with 17 assists, very, very impressive. Again, one sample size, but the point remains D'Angelo Russell has been excellent in the month of February and continues to be that guy the Lakers need him to be even when he had to overcome some of the difficulties of the stuff off the court that he had no control over with the trade talk and speculation. But here D'Angelo Russell is playing at a very, very high level. So one of my important takeaways leading into the All-Star break and that is that D'Angelo Russell has found his groove. So is that the perfect starting lineup? Because here's a fun little nugget for you. The Lakers are 6-1 and one this season when D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and Rui Hachimura are in the starting lineup. So accuse me of cherry-picking with the stats, make it what it is, but the fact of the matter remains 6-1 and one, uh, is pretty impressive with this starting lineup with Austin Reeves, 
Rui Hachimura and D'Angelo Russell all in the starting lineup. And the other two with Anthony Davis and Torian Prince from last night. These were the starters versus Utah. Obviously, when LeBron in the lineup will start instead of Prince. But you get the idea. When Darvin Ham presses the right buttons and finds that correct starting rotation, it really helps the Los Angeles Lakers. So obviously, factor no LeBron. But when LeBron's out, do you like this lineup? Let me know down in the comments. Type Y for yes or N for no. And overall, in general, how you feel about Darvin Ham mixing the different starting lineups. If you like what he's putting forth so far, let me know. If you think, oh, no, maybe he should do something different, let me know as well. So continuing on with our five takeaways leading into the NBA All-Star break. How about LeBron and Anthony Davis? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah they're still bona fide superstars. Let's not forget that because you look at the numbers that they put up this season so far. This is why it's so important for the Lakers not to waste this season because LeBron and AD both have been playing so well, been able to stay relatively healthy. We'll use that term loosely, of course. But just absolutely stuffing the stat sheet, playing efficiently. And when you have two superstars on the roster contributing to the bottom line the way the Lakers do, you don't want to waste those years. So I know as a fact of the matter with the Lakers not making a move at the NBA trade deadline, it felt like maybe we're punting on this season a little bit. But I think the final stretch of the regular season, the addition of Spencer Dinwiddie, what the Lakers can do down the stretch and into the playoffs will have a significant impact on what LeBron James decides to do this summer. We all know about the player option that he can exercise and become an unrestricted free agent if he were to choose. But the point remains, in right now, you look at this season in a vacuum, LeBron's been relatively healthy, incredible what he's been able to do, his 20th All-Star selection, an NBA record, AD's been playing really well, the role players are starting to step up, you've won seven of your last eight games in February, and things are moving in the right direction, which leads me to my final point, that Darvin Ham can save his job if the rest of the season and into the playoffs goes according to plan. Now, the Lakers and Lakers management, Lakers brass, whatever you want to call it, have been behind Darvin Ham and very supportive of Darvin Ham, even in the midst of some growing pains. But I think there's a lot of speculation, both from the fan base, both, both and from the players, just kind of murmurs, rumblings, if you will, and I think Rui's comments post-game yesterday actually kind of, maybe he intended to, or maybe he didn't, but kind of sent some uh, perspective into how some of the players might feel about Darvin Ham. And I don't want to go as far as say as Rui called him out, but he did kind of suggest that we've been trying to tell Darvin Ham that this starting lineup is what we should stick with. And so the official quote from Rui Hachimara is, we've been trying a lot of different things, lineups, all this stuff, but this is the lineup we had in the playoffs, and that's how we won so you know it's that simple. And again, I don't think Rui is trying to make this comment that he disagrees with Darvin Ham. I just wanted to pick this out as a point of conversation that it hasn't always been smooth sailing for Darvin Ham as far as the perspective from players and what they think of him as well as the fan base. But if things continue to go according to plan, the Lakers make a run down the stretch here. They make an impact and make some noise in the playoffs, make a deep run. Obviously, I feel good about the future of Darvin Ham and him is as the coach in Los Angeles. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Go ahead and sound off. What's your confidence level that Darvin Ham will be back next season? Scale it for me, 1 to 10, if you think there's no doubt. Darvin Ham will be the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers in 2024-25 season. Go ahead and type 10. If you think, get him out of here, fire that man, go ahead and type 1. Or if it's somewhere in the middle, either way, you got to let me know and let your voice be heard here on the Lakers Report. I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in today. Always a pleasure to be on the air talking Lakers basketball with you. And as always, it's a reminder to support subscribe to the channel because we bring you Lakers content each and every day covering the purple and gold and it's been fun lately it's been a lot more fun so we won't hold it against you if you were waiting out on this team a little bit to subscribe and now the fact that they've won seven of eight yeah I'm in I'm in either way welcome one welcome all come one come all 
We're here. We're a community on YouTube. We're the Lakers Report, so subscribe to the channel. Want to thank my producer on the ones and twos today, Jackson Lauderay, helping us bring you the Lakers Report. And as always, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Lakers Report.